Inevitable. It was inevitable. You all said it. I knew it. You knew it. This is Trial Tube, and this was inevitable. So as we've said, it was inevitable. I was gonna end up on a red machine and what can I say? There'll be some people that are very surprised that I've jumped back to carburation, but if I'm having a gas gas, I haven't really got a choice, have I? I do like the bike. I like the bike in Spain. I said I like the bike again when I tested the Clubman version because I honestly think that this is almost the perfect bike. But I knew that if I was gonna have a gas gas, I needed to come to somewhere that only has got the heritage and shall we say a place that's knocked out more gas gases than anywhere else in the UK by a long way. If I was going to have my TXT GP, it was definitely going to come from John Sherr Motorcycles. So it's been a long time since I've actually picked up a gas gas or a new gas gas from John Shirt Motorcycles. I think the, uh, the last gas gas I rode was when I was about 14 years old, obviously a couple of years ago. Uh, I was in the B class and when I jumped off a gas gas, I actually went to a beta. It was a Rev3, it was in the year 2000 and it was when the Rev3 had upside down forks and the bike rode really heavy. It didn't suit me whatsoever and it sort of like was the final nail in the coffin for me going over to the bicycle. But I'm super excited about picking this bike up and I wasn't gonna teach John Sher how to suck eggs when it came to bike setup. So the bike's been perfectly PDI'd by the guys here at JSM. And you know what? Instead of me telling you a bit about the TXT GP, I'm gonna let John tell you a little bit because he actually described the bike fantastically earlier on and what it means to be on a gas gas, especially nowadays. So we've had a chance to steal John away for five minutes because it's a very, very busy place this JSM. He's got a lot going on and very quickly to have a quick chat about a the fact of how much time that john has spent shall we say putting together gas gases through the years which i imagine would be an immense amount of time at this point john yeah it's been a few years jesus yeah hell of a long time when was the first gas gas through the door at jsm 88 there was one i remember it like it was yesterday um and then soon after that one there was 10 and then I think we had to buy some back mud guards because I kept breaking back mud guards and then it went on, man, but oh, I, could, I need to write a book. It's, we could have an interview of, you know, hours and hours. That. Oh, Jesus, it's, yeah, it's been a... Podcast topic. <sighs> yeah, it's been, a, it's been a roller coaster, that is, for sure. <laughs> Now, I remember coming here, as shall we say, like, uh, obviously, as you said previously, new bike day mm. today. And uh, I remember coming here for a few new bike days as a kid as well, which is uh, an exciting time. I can always remember um, at the old place where, you know, you get out of the van first, prior to being excited about having my new bike, I'd be attacked by your crazy dog. <laughs> yeah, Max. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Max would uh, try and bite me on the way. I mean, I think <laughs> he was doing it from a place of love. I think. It's just nibbling, yeah. <laughs> He's just happy to see me like an entree. Um, and then, you know, it would always be picking up a yellow one. So for me, believe it or not, this is actually my first red one. Oh, is it? In my life. Oh, yeah. crikey. They were all yellow when yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. Um, part of me wanted to go full banana Steve Colley style and try and build a yellow one, but I think it'd be impossible now. He used to paint his boots yellow. Yeah, I know. I remember yeah, that. Ebo, that was Ebo didn't make yellow boots, but he had yellow boots because his dad just used to nip to the local motor factors and buy some yellow paint and paint his boots. It was insane. You heard it here first, that's like, well factory. Yeah. That's, um, so, yeah. He that? had Hebo yellow boots, <laughs> courtesy of Brian. Um, Steve, if you're watching this, and I know that he watches them, um, 
You've been found out if you dodge yellow boots. Um, <laughs> that was a bit more stuff on stick, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, so no, there'd be, there'd be new buy days where I'd go get my bike, obviously picked up or prepped by yourself, and times during my C-class and B-class career where, where we'd be up here quite a lot getting bikes rebuilt and, and sorted and tuned by John as well. Um, I remember a time when me and James Dave also had sort of shock weights. That we'd always pick a shocker up from John. Um, so he was always in the workshop and is also very much famed, whether he knows it or not, for putting together a very good bike. Yeah. Your bikes always look well. Um, you know, rolling out, you do a lot of enduro now, I know. Yeah, it's just quite hard at the enduro stuff when my uh, body and my knees let me. But, uh, but no, I love it. I just love getting it on. And to me nowadays, it's just pandle bars. You know, I love my e-bike, I love my trials bike, and I love racing, but I think I get less, I get less pestering, if that's a word, when I'm racing. Um, so yeah, and I love Wales. So I just like going to Wales. It's, there's less people, there's more sheep, but that's not in a funny way. Uh, I, yeah, I just like being, I just like being in the countryside. At the end of the day, I'm a country bumpkin and that's it, so. So on the build of the, obviously I chose the Gas Gas GP model mm -hmm. just simply because uh, I'm a massive tart and I can't help myself. And um, for you, we, well, we had a little off screen conversation prior to this mm -hmm. where um, John very eloquently put what riding a Gas Gas feels like. And uh, what was the word you used, John? Uh, I think it, I use the word turn you on, but not in a sexual way. It, it's, it's a funny feeling for me when I ride, when I ride a Gas Gas Trials bike, it inspires confidence. Um, you know, I am Gas Gas through and through, aren't I? You know, I, I'm not just selling well, not Gas so much Gas. anymore. No, I'm not selling gas, just Gas Gas nowadays, but it's very hard after, you know, I've ridden Gas Gas since 1988 when yeah. it started, so, but, Honda prior they, to that? They just, yeah, yeah, HRC Honda. Um, that was too good for me back then, but anyway, that's another story. But it, it, it's, I don't know, they just, I just feel happy riding a gasser, do you cool. know what I mean? And they, they inspire confidence. Some bikes arguably, you might keep your feet up better in a normal boring type clubman section, but they don't inspire confidence like a gasser does. It's like the Ferrari of trials, if you like, I don't know. Yeah, uh, definitely now. Definitely. Even even more so in, um, I'd, I'd say in this new version, new style, mm. um, also with the minimalist look, um, you know, some people really are on board with the fact that there's less stickers on a bike now than what there was previously. Mm. Um, but I think they've tried to do something new and the bike has been reinvented again, but would you still say it's kept that same Spanish heritage? I know. Yeah, it has. I mean, a lot of people are surprised it's not gone fuel injection, which is another massive topic, but uh, I just think Trials is grassroots motorsport. Um, adding a complication to a Trials bike is adding complications, it's adding cost. I just don't think it's needed. Um, and surprisingly with KTM, who've got more experience in injection and T-Pound than anybody else, they still keep their bike with a carburetor. Um, they carburetor great, they run great. If there's a problem, you can fix it at the side of the van yeah. or on a Tuesday night in your garage. You don't have to take it to a dealer. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Um, but they just, they just run so well with a carburetor, so I don't really see the point in complicating a, a, a trials bike. I really don't. Everybody in the comments right now will be saying that I should definitely fall forward to John's knowledge and you'll all be basically killing me, which is completely fine. Um, once again, I've done. Well, then when Gascus make a few new <laughs> trials <laughs> buys, it'll be the best thing to Yeah, of course it will. Of course. Right, listen, I'm 52 now, so you're trying to convert somebody that's kind of that middle generation that's like old school, but yet I ride a 350, I race a 350 red ktm i ride a gas gas 350 when i'm racing if it stops i haven't got a clue what to do i have yeah. got no idea how to fix it it touch, stops and touch, it's saying touch stops. wood it doesn't stop because yeah. they're great if it does i can't fix it <laughs> and a lot of trials customers they like to fix and play and mess with their own bikes of course they do of course so, they do but that's off, that's off, the weekend off, the weekend warrior who we uh, who we know and love but now, that, that's off topic mate you know you're on you're on a new bike day aren't you yeah and you've chose gas gas um yeah that's a sad and s3 so john is of course the s3 importer and in many, many, many of my videos, you've seen me basically deck my bikes out with S3. Uh, and there's a reason behind that. And the reason is simply, I like the stuff. Hmm. Um, you know, John, 
How long have you been in the S3 in Porto 4, John? Good grief. I don't know, mate. It, it's, you know, it, it, it's the company is one man. Well, yeah. Apart from his, obviously, his, his workforce. Michelle Kaufman, he is married to the daughter of Old Gas Gas. Yeah. Um, the Old Gas Gas boss was, is uh, Jose P. Benat. And Michelle at S3 is married to to Peba's daughter, and he's 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 a Swiss guy. So straight away, he's obsessed with quality. Yes, he is living in Catalonia, and he's very you know Catalonia based, but his roots are from Switzerland. So he started. He is an engineer. So he was making cylinders for gas gas. He was making he was making the swinging arms for gas gas. Engineering place. He's an engineer, and then I think the first. The first product he made was a titanium front pipe for Adam Ragger. And I said to him, I can sell them. Uh, I don't know if I was the first person he sold to, but basically he made the titanium front pipe, which I sold. And then I said, oh, do you fancy making the, and I got him more keen on making um, accessories for trials bikes. And it's the relationship's grown from then. And it's, it's going good. It's going a bit too fast for my liking. He's, he's super enthusiastic. He's got a lot of staff and his business is, is not flying in a arrogant way, but he's charging, man. He's absolutely flat out. Uh, That's good to see as well. Yeah, because, you know, you see the enduro side of it as well. Obviously, yeah. them partnering with the likes of people like Billy Bolt and mm. again, from trials into enduro. Mm. And I think that S3 as a brand are cool, man. There's no, there's no other word for it. I think they're a cool brand. Yeah, I think he's done a great job with the, the product. Listen, he does great quality products. The pricing is good. Um, and he's done a lot of work on branding. You know, it's yeah. important to build a brand nowadays. And the other brands we were talking about earlier, you know, looking at the other brand people that do a, an excellent job and people that have got fantastic products but don't really lift the brand, yeah. it, it, you need to do both. And I think at the minute S3 is they've got good products, good price, good quality, and it, it's a kind of a cool brand. Yeah. Like I really pushed him to helping Billy, and Billy's obviously doing what Billy does. You know, he's not a human, is he? It's like Dougie Lampkin's not a human being. People need yeah. to understand yeah. that they are people from planet Zod, yeah. not <laughs> normal people. <laughs> and Billy's an extraordinary I was going to say guy. He's not a guy. He's just an, a, a, you know, he's an extra. Happening. Yeah, he's just a, anyway. He's a something. He's definitely so he's something. on board with S3. Um, so, he, you know, he's helping make the brand be, be really cool of what he's doing. No, it's mega. Well, we're going to get some parts put on in, uh, in the next bit of footage. But it was good to catch up with John Shirt. And you can come and find these guys at Harper Hill Industrial Estate just outside Buxton. In the sun, sunny Buxton. Sunny Buxton. Yeah. Sunny Buxton. Uh, hopefully the wind isn't coming over the microphone right now from outside. But uh, I'll be running my bike in pretty much tomorrow yeah and we'll um oh, it'll probably be raining as well which is great but uh, then we're going to go and have a full bike check later on in this video but it was just good to catch up with john who uh, said he'll come on the podcast at some point as absolutely. well absolutely yeah because why not that is a longer conversation <laughs> the, oh, the podcast we'll is um, shit then we can talk some absolute crap uh but all trials based crap um, mainly trials but again thank you very much for putting my bike together for me john i really appreciate it well it's the lads you know i just want to finish we you know we've we had a very, very good run with um, Factory Kev, Kev, Hit, Kev Hit. Well, I used to do the spanner in. Sorry, my dad used to do the spanner in. Then it was me for many years. And then Kev, Kev joined us in 2002 at the start of the Pro, which was a nightmare of a model. Um, so a lot of the success in the company is workshop related. Yeah. And that goes back from my dad. I had a period of being on the spanners. Kev worked here for 20 years, so all the results, all the fantastic achievements that we've had through the riders, great product. It all, for me, all stems from workshop. You know, the, the, the heart of, uh, you know, a motorcycle dealership or, or an importership is you've got to you've got to get the workshop sorted. We've got two great lads now. They haven't got the experience of Kevin well, or, or you know, well, who has? Because <laughs> they they haven't, but they're getting experience. The products are getting better quality now. The PDI time is getting less. Um, but I'm really happy. I've got young guys in the company. Um, you know, I'm 52, which is kind of, I say, that middle generation. But my two mechanics are 20 odd year old. They're keen. They're young. They're enthusiastic. So now it's good. Now I'm quite happy with uh, with the crew we've got here. It's uh, it's going okay. So what were the uh, just because as he mentioned it, and I'm going to get asked in the comments. So I've got to do this just for a service for the uh, for the viewers. 
So what was the nightmare thing about the Gas Gas Pro back in the day? Oh, good God. <laughs> I mean, it, it was just produced too early. Yeah. It was produced in 2002, and me and my dad foresaw f- that it was going to be a nightmare, which it was. Amazing performance, but the gearboxes were just shocking. <laughs> but this was, I don't know, mate, I was going to say five years minimum. Yeah. You know, without without our really decent dealers on board at the time with good mechanics again john lee motorcycles now it's like they are one of the biggest and most respected dealerships in the country because they've got well respected people in the workshop yeah anybody that's good got good technicians they call them nowadays anybody that's got a good workshop based dealership it, it, that's the key for me because there's too many dealers think oh yeah i'll sell some bikes it, this is the pretty side of it. This, 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 this is the pretty side of it. The, the, the hard work and the, you know, the, the gaining of respect comes from from producing and, and PDIing decent stuff. And I'm, you know, I'm ruthless with these two lads. Every single buyer that goes out of this place, I don't care if it's for Joe Bloggs, Danny Butler, Tony Bow. I don't care. I just got. I just got. It's, I was in the same sentence as Tony. It's got to be bony toe. It's got to be spot. And I'm an. I know my defects. I'm a nightmare. I'm a control freak. I've got OCD. I like things correct, and I mean, pro- I want them right. Yeah. So I can be a bit of an annoying twat <laughs> when it comes to that. But I want it right. I don't want that customer to come back with a whingy problem. Yeah because it's just no good for anybody. No, it's so. no good for anybody, but I definitely feel that, you, again, you've heard it here first, success can be built in the workshop. Yeah, you can. I mean, that's, my dad, good God, in the end, not in the end, my dad used to PDI every single bike. He used to do one before breakfast and come home when I was a kid, and then he had breakfast, and then he'd go to work and do his normal stuff in the business and always do another two bikes. So before they went out to the dealers in boxes, every single bike was PDI'd because they were that bad, they needed it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, and then it's gone on from there. The PDI, the preparation of the bike, there's nothing more annoying than you're buying something and something goes wrong. That first impression, that first ride, if something falls off your bike, the first ride, you're gonna be like, oh. You, you know, your balloon's going to be popped straight away. Yeah. So I, you know, I like things right, end of. So, mega. Well, we've been able to catch up with John Shirt, and to be honest, I have really enjoyed it. I don't know if you have on the other end of the, uh, on the, other end of the camera, but as always, it's an absolute pleasure. It's good to be uh, picking up a bike again from JSM, and uh, come and see these guys, you know, they're always... They're, they're, I feel like almost as a staple part of Buxton now, you know, if you're coming into uh, to co- coming into the Peak District, come and check out the showroom, which is fantastic, by the way. It's uh, monstrous and it's full of toys, which <laughs> we all want to be under the tree, even though it is January. And um, again, thank you very much for your time, John. We really appreciate no problem, it. Mate. Thank you very much, dude. Thanks very much. Roll VT. <laughs> I, I, So just been to John Shirt's place, obviously really good to catch up with John and the team at JSM. Um, now my bike came through Gas Gas and through JSM, that's sort of how I ended up being back on a Gas, well back on a Gas Gas, I say back on a Gas Gas. Uh, the last time I was on a Gas Gas I was actually 13 years old, so it's uh, been a little chunk of time in between. Now 
Full disclosure, I've been out on this bike a couple of times now, once day teaching and once I was out for about an hour's worth of my own practice, uh, which has allowed me to set the bike up a little more towards my preferences, things like where the levers are going to be sat. Uh, I've still got a few jobs to do, like changing the pressure plates on the clutch to make sure that that clutch feel is a little harder because I prefer a stiffer clutch. Um, I have got some upgrades coming on the bike to uh, look out for from the team from Trun. Um, that uh, Andrea and the team over there have sent me over. So you'll see those slowly getting drip fed to the bike. And what this has allowed me to do by going out and riding the bike is getting used to it properly in my own time without the uh, prying eyes of gas gas in Spain watching me ride it. Now, I know there's gonna be a lot of people right now that are gonna be saying things like, oh, he's jumped back on a bike with a carb, etc., etc., etc." I've never said that the carb is a bad thing. I do prefer a fuel injected bike and it's due to the fact of the feeling from my, shall we say, the signal from my wrist to the bike itself. That's it. I just prefer the feeling of a fuel injected bike. I'm going to stand by that. I may have a carbureted bike now, but what I do prefer is the feel of the fuel injection. Now to try and get that in this bike, unfortunately I've had to basically try to time the throttle cable up to the point where it's like a violin string and um, as I'm working on getting used to the bike, I've had to slow down my riding style to suit the bike. Um, being from a bicycle background as well, that's difficult for me because normally my bike weighs eight kilos, not 80, and does as it's, uh, do, does as it's told instantly. <sighs> now, I'm still getting used to this bike, and I'm not going to lie, but there's some nifty little things that Gas Gas have done that I wholeheartedly enjoy, which are, well, I'm going to tell you in a minute as soon as I get, you know, pull out the shop, uh, the electric start. No, I'm joking. That's, that's not a thing. <sighs> Carbureted bikes. That's, that was a joke, yeah? <laughs> So I've been out riding on it twice in the mud and trust me, this bike was muddy, like next level muddy on purpose to see if anything went in the airbox because I've come from a Vertigo and from the Sherco, the Sherco wasn't as good in the airbox as the Vertigo, but nothing seems to be as good as the airbox in it, as a Vertigo, apart from this. So far, no water, no mud, no grime, two rides, clean air filter. Nice one. Now usually, I would have taken this item off my bike because as an expert rider, I'm often ridiculed for having a stand. Yeah, I know, it's a thing. Um, but the stand on the new Gas Gas is quite cool because every other stand on a trials bike I've ever used, when you close the stand, it sounds like a crack of lightning or smash glass or, well, yeah, it just doesn't sound very nice. But what they've done is, they've had a little think and taken some technology from the Enduro bike and listen to this. Did you hear that? Ready? It's quite nice. Now, the last time I did a bit of a gas gas review, shall we say, I, um, I didn't have enough time on the bike to really get used to it and really tell you what I did and didn't like. Um, so good thing number one is the stand, yeah? Very nice. Still, 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 it's not insulting, is it, that noise? Good thing number two is the enormous pegs, which will come off really, really quickly with that um, new KTM D-pin with the little circlet that goes underneath. Yeah, man, they're cool. And uh, good thing number three, here we go, we're just rattling through these, aren't we? Quick fire, YouTube style. The little nodder or nubbin or extra bit on the edge of the kickstart, which would uh, save your sh back of your calf every time you fire one up. Because on the old gas gas, that whip-like return of the, of the kickstart definitely cost me a, a bruise or 23. So uh, yeah, there's that. So there's three good things. I can keep going. Now more good parts about the gas gas, they've actually shortened the length of the, of the forks, not the throw, but the, just the length of the forks, because I've scratched it. What the hell? How? When? They've shortened the length of the forks basically to lower the front end 
taking the forks away from the rider with a riser bar. So your hands are in the same place, but all of the bit in the middle has improved so that the bike can be ridden at a steeper angle without sort of pushing the rider's weight too far back. So the gas gas actually feels better on the back wheel than most bikes. I can keep going. Well, you're not gonna believe this. The next one is the headlight. I like the fact that it's got a nice flat area on the headlight so that you can stick a number on there with ease. Because, well, when I had the vertigo, it just wasn't that easy to put the number on there because it was like a thin slip, or as Stu Daly described it as, it looked like, looked like a bit of a G-string. I think that's a thing. Next winner's gotta be the wheels. Those oversized hubs look fit. And as John Shirt said, a bit sexy. Although, there are some stickers on the bike now. I really did enjoy the fact that they changed the stickers to these sort of printed graphics. If I'm gonna be honest, that's the future, that is. That's way better than uh, anything anyone else has done. The standard neck and bars, they come in as well. Larger up sweep, but that's to factor in the fact that the uh, fork legs are now shorter. So don't go changing your bars to any rentals at this point because, well, they just don't feel right unless you build some spaces in. Okay, let's talk about the bad. Oh God, look at that scratch. That's horrendous. Day one. So here we go. Now remember, this is not necessarily a bad point about the bike. This is just a bad point that I've picked up for me personally. And the first bad point is the size of the back brake tip. That's right, this. It just doesn't come out far enough in comparison, I'll try and show you on an angle, in comparison to where the kickstart sits. So to get to it, you've almost got to like, when you put your foot on, you've got this nice wide peg and you could be all the way out here and to get to it, you have to twist your foot. So yeah, I just think that it's quite small. It's not too bad, obviously, but I have come off a Vertigo and the Vertigo one is massive and feels amazing. So, Bad point number two is basically that the, the standard gearing that comes on the bike is on 39 on the back, which basically means that the bike's super smooth, the gears are long, great in the UK mud, um, but if you want to do anything that involves jumping around or hopping the bike around, it just takes a bit more effort and it's not as, it's not as snappy out the back end. Like I said, these aren't major gripes and they're easy to change over. Uh, I know that a lot of the factory gas gas riders are on a 41 tooth on the back, so there you go. That tells you everything you need to know. Um, will I be changing it? Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, gonna try and get used to the bike a little bit more in the mud with the gearing that I'm on. But if it really does start to peeve me, it's coming off. Now honestly, that's my only two gripes about the bike. The gearing and the back brake tip could be a bit bigger, if I'm honest. Um, I'm gonna be adjusting the pressure plate on the clutch as well to make it just a bit more snappy and see if that helps. But apart from that, I really like the bike. Um, we know that the unbreakable mud guard, we know the unbreakable mud guard now breaks um, because, well, maybe not in Spain, but here in the UK where it's <sighs> bloody freezing, then uh, yeah, it does, it breaks. It's still pretty bendy though, so good job, Gas Gas. Um, to address the people that are probably going to give me jip in the comments and say that he swapped back to a carb. Yeah, I have, yeah. Uh, not because it's better, because it's not. Um, it, it is, I've actually done more tinkering with the carb to try and get the bike to feel as good as a fuel injected bike that it's actually starting to get on my nerves a little bit. So there you go. Uh, when I had my Vertigo or, or the Sherco, I set it and walked off. It was amazing. Um, it still rides really well and I do like it and I think it looks fit. And I like the fact that Gas Gas have gone all motocrossy with their branding and just basically made trials cool. No stupid squares like a bike that's just been released with stickers drawn by a six year old. You know what I mean, don't you? Of course you do, because you've got eyes. Um, but apart from that, there's gonna be a lot more updates on this bike. There's gonna be uh, some trundling on there. We're gonna go see Dot Wob, he's gonna sort us out as well. Um, and before we wrap up, check out all the new merch. That's right, we've tried the merch out many times now. It sells at an alarming rate. I've put way too much money into it, so I'd really appreciate if somebody bus bought it because, well, I can't eat later. So, you know, if you know a trials rider that's in need, give one pound a month to our YouTube channel and possibly you could help Danny Butler eat because right now he's got an addiction to buying cool bits. Um, oh, by the way, 
this bike was once again bought. There was a, a little bit of support from Gas Gas, but they were completely under the, under the, um, what's the word? They understood that I was going to say whatever the hell I wanted to, regardless of what they may say or try and help me out. So uh, keeping us honest here at Trial Tube as always. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, tell your mates, um, watch it 24-7, leave it on overnight time, whatever it may be, and do not fast forward through the adverts. Right, I'm off. Uh, wear your helmet, kids. This is not cool. Here we go. Uh, uh. I would have started first time with fuel injection. Oh, beauty. Austrian.